event of Sea Family takes pride in presenting to you our Board of Judges for the first event. Our first judge is a graduate of psychology at Colegio San Agustin, Macaulay. He took further, further studies in spirituality and the Italian language in Florence, Italy, and currently taking up masters in conflict and reconciliation studies at the University of Saint Lazare, Macaulay. He used to write for Sun Star Macaulay in Shop Magazine as youth columnist and lifestyle writer and editor. Currently, he is working with the Peace and Conflict Journalism Network, writing freelance for various organizations and facilitating leadership trainings in social awareness and writing seminar workshops. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our first judge, Mr. J. Galera. Instructor, sorry, from Maheo University in Shopkon, Thailand. Is this right, sir? From 2007 to 2008. And from 2008 to present, he is the director of the Center for English Language and Literature of the West Nervous University. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our second judge, Dr. Elizar. He also trains students and made champions on the same events. He is a writer of original declamations, storytelling, and oratorical pieces. He is a project coordinator, or he was the project coordinator of ILIPS production and event services. He also is the creative consultant for VAMP's Elite Models under ILIPS production. He was a speech training manager of BizTalk Call Center and pioneered Soft Skills Optimization Program. He is the Accent and Communication Skills Trainer on project-based accounts for links for Biz Global Solutions. He is a speech instructor, instructor of Speech Republic Center for Speech Training, formerly known as the Kitty Speech Class of the late Mrs. Lourdes Celis and he is also a consistent Lamsea judge. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our third judge, Mr. A. Celis Manimantan. Our fourth judge is into her postgraduate studies of Masters in English at LCC Macaulay. She trained under Mariano Simpson for theater at Adriana and Valderrama.
Recently, we have this typhoon Nina that struck northern Luzon and had caused many sufferings and destruction to the lives of the people. This typhoon can cause damage and destruction to the people. Regarding to the question, the main causes for the development of typhoon in our country would be the hot air and cold air in the atmosphere. The hot air in the atmosphere, which are the positively charged, which carries positively charged protons, and uh, the negatively charged protons, which are the cold air. If this cold air and hot air in the atmosphere would collide, their union would produce reaction, and this, re this reaction would trigger the development of the typhoon. There are also many causes of the development of hot air and cold air. The smokes and the chemicals that are being spread by the factories in the atmosphere, these chemicals that are accumulated in the atmosphere might, might either increase or decrease the level of the protons and the electrons that are present in the atmosphere. You see here, typhoon is a natural calamity and we cannot control this. It is our nature's way of punishing us for the abuse that we are having in his nature. So my plea here is, if you want not to experience these drastic situations, we must learn how to limit ourselves from abusing the blessings of our nation. Thank you once again, Mithi. Governments, like human institutions, I can compare to a balance sheet. Governments have assets, and they also have liabilities. How is this related to my question? Which is, are you in favor of changing the Philippine government to federalism? We all know that all governments, since they come from imperfect human beings, are also inherently imperfect. Before I can decide whether I am in favor of federalism, let me first weigh its pros and cons. The good thing about federalism is, federalism grants more autonomy to individual regions. That is, each region has more or less equal power with central government. This would mean that each individual governor has more independence in starting its projects, creating its regional laws, and implementing things necessary for the common good. However, federalism's downfall is that this is more prone to splitting. Let me know. That is because in federalism, since each region is more or less independent, each region could also break away whether it wants to or not. Furthermore, federalism could lead to a multitude of laws in different regions. For example, one region may favor abortion, while another will not. One region may favor contraceptives, while another will not. So a person traveling would, may have certain legal complications. For example, if it is divorced. Now, my final question is, is it deal or no deal? Well, I believe that before we start changing the government, we should start changing ourselves. Character change should be prioritized before the so-called charter change. Thank you. Kim, Kim. 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 Adaya. Adaya. Time and time again, we have been told to reduce, reuse, and recycle. But let me ask you, are we really practicing this? My question is, what can you say on the implementation of the solid waste management program of the city? Can you cite manifestations of its positive effects? 
when we walk along the roads of Bacolod, we see that there is garbage scattered everywhere. People are loitering, even though there are clearly garbage cans provided for them. At schools, there is a non-biodegradable and a biodegradable waste can. However, are the students really segregating their waste? In the malls, like at SM, we see there are also biodegradable and non-biodegradable garbage cans. But I cannot see people who really try to put effort into segregating their waste. Even though the city is trying to implement the solid waste management program, there is still a lack of awareness among the people. If you just tell the people to segregate their waste and they don't even understand why, why should they even bother? They don't know why they're doing it anyway, and it would be more effort on their part. If we do not educate the people about the consequences, of just loitering in our city, then they would not even mind to think of how they can help in the management of our solid waste here in Mahalo. Furthermore, are we just going to wait for our government to keep on implementing these kind of programs before we start to act? We should not wait for them to tell us to help our city because this is our home, this is where we live. If we don't take care of the environment, then we will be the ones to suffer in the end. So in conclusion, I believe that even though the city is trying to implement the solid waste management program, there is still a lack of awareness among the people. And because of that, they do not even mind to practice this program. And we ourselves, as the citizens of the Philippines, should do our part in protecting our environment. And we shouldn't wait for the government to tell us to do so. This is our responsibility. Therefore, I challenge all of you, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Thank you. Students, parents, faculty, and staff, and last but not least, honorable judges. The question stated is, explain how the VAT has kept the, in the inflation rate of the Philippine economy from rapidly ballooning to double-digit figure. Well, all I can say about this is only one thing. How the VAT has kept our economy from rapidly ballooning the double-digit figure is that the value-added tax takes extra funds that we pay. Furthermore, if one of us does that, we are like helping our country lower down to an economic crisis. Senator Cheese Escudero said, the Philippines is losing 1 billion pesos a year due to smuggling. Smuggling is one cost. If we could keep on smuggling, we would deteriorate to a lower economy. I believe our economy will rapidly rise if we don't smuggle, don't do drastic things in which to help ourselves. We should not think of ourselves. We should think about others. We should think about the awareness that we should acknowledge in our daily lives. You have heard my answer. You have seen me standing before you. That is what I am. Good afternoon. Distinguished Board of Judges, my dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Mahatma Gandhi believed that he rejected violence. For once violence looks like it's doing good, even it leaves, lasts forever. This afternoon's question is what is your opinion about the armed forces of the Philippines?
is putting up of the additional battalion in the province of Negros. Let's begin with the armed forces of the Philippines. They uphold the government and they uphold the law. They fight the MLF rebels because they need to be fought, they need to be controlled, and they need to be sustained. We have to pacify them to prevent further loss of life. And on the other hand, the MLF rebels, they want their ancestral land. Why pick up a gun and pull that trigger? We don't like war. War is costly. It costs us our economy. It costs us property. It costs us lives. It destroys the future of its citizens. Furthermore, the MILF rebels are recruiting kids like you and me. They're recruiting kids that know not of war just so that they have more men to fight. Do we like that to happen to our children? Do we like that to happen to our economy? War is very costly and that is one reason why the Philippines is suffering. Why should we fight them? Why should we put up another battalion? Who is there to fight? Look at it closely. We respect the same hymn. We respect the same flag. We recite the same pledge. We live in the same country. Why fight each other? Aren't we all brothers and sisters? We share the same culture. We share the same heritage under the Spanish rule. We both enjoy our freedom. Why should we fight them? I say stop right now. It is causing bloodshed. Innocent civilians have died because of the crossfire. Both the AFP and the MILF have caused this. The MILF leaders should pay for what they have done, but before that, a ceasefire must be called so that we can talk. Unity of the people, why can't we have that? We have proven that to the world time and time again. ENSA 1, ENSA 2, no matter how powerful the government is, they can be toppled over once we are united. If their cause is peace and our cause is peace, why do we have different methods in attaining them? Why should there be bloodshed? I ask you, why should we continue this fighting? It is meaningless. War is nothing but problems. It brings bad things to the economy, to the children, and to its people. I say we stop right now. Good men are what we need. The men who need something to do. They are the ones who can put a stop to this. They are the ones who can discuss. They are the ones who, can, I believe, can make a difference. They are the ones who can bring about change. I am asking those good men, take a stand. Stand up, muster up courage. Fight this oppression. Let us not be racist anymore. We are of one blood. What does it matter? Evil only triumphs when good men do nothing. So I'm appealing to you. Peace cannot be held together by force. It can only be achieved through understanding. Thank you. Courageous gentlemen, Gorgeous ladies, dedicated students and teachers, watchful judges, a pleasant afternoon. And the question thrown upon me is, what are the pros and the cons involved in the memorandum of agreement on ancestral domain between the government and the MILM forces? Empires are forged by war.
nations that have been outside our borders will no longer mark us as one of those nations that cannot, that cannot uphold and cannot discipline its people. And the very negative effect of this memorandum of agreement is that if the Baxamoro people can create their own government, do you think
Yes. My question goes this way. It is very important that there is no stopping to the increased price of oil. To what extent will this affect the lives of the Filipinos? For example, let's put this way. This extent of increasing of the price of oil is like a disease in a body, in which it slowly kills down a body. For me, this is
Okay, we're 